and good morning. Okay, let's get rid of this one. All right, welcome, welcome back. Uh, my name is Kuber. In case you did not know that, or in case you are here for the first time, my I'm a CICC licensed immigration consultant, and I do this because I love it. Of course, it's my also my job, but that's not why I do it. Uh, I, I do it because I absolutely love it. The whole field of Canadian immigration continues to be such interesting in terms of the data, the statistics, the updates, the the ups, the downs, and everything that goes with it. So I love it. Uh, here you are here today because you are probably either interested in the live Q and A, which we will do at the later part of this uh, session, and of course we will do a very brief uh, update of whatever has happened within the last week uh, as far as the Canadian immigration is concerned. So that's what we do each week, uh, the the weekly roundup. You know what? Nothing much actually happened this week, but we will still go through it very quickly and then we can come back to your question and answers. Today, today's episode is going to be a bit of a short one because I'm going to run for my consultations in 50 minutes. So we have this 50 minutes with you. Very quickly do the, 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 the presentation, the weekly roundup in 5 to 10 minutes. Then talk about express entry and what can we expect in the month of January. Only January. We'll, we'll stick to January. We'll do it month by month. Otherwise, we're just going too far ahead of our times, right? And then we will come to your live question and answer. So without further ado, let's get cracking with the quote of the week. The life does not get a bit. The, the life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. Jim Rohn, so, so, so profound. I mean, I, I love Jim Rohn. I mean, uh, he passed away long back, but his, his YouTube videos, his uh, motivational speeches that are available. I mean, if you listen to that guy, I mean, it will change your life as well. So do do give it a shot. Try and, and see, find him and, and listen to him. And you can see what, what difference he can make and what wisdom he, he uh, imparts. The life does not get up by chance. Obviously, right? Uh, people who think you will get rich by chance, you buy lottery tickets. Of course, some of you uh, get lucky. But then that doesn't necessarily mean that it will change your life. But if you want to change, then you have to change. You bring those changes, bring those changes in your life, and, and then you can actually, as I say, right, if you if you want to live an ordinary life, do ordinary. Uh, if you want to live extraordinary life, do extraordinary. So it will all depend on what you will do, how you will do it. So you bring your change, and that's when the change will happen. Canadian Immigration Weekly Roundup. Uh, topic of dis discussion, PNP draws. There were no PNP draws. <laughs> Surprisingly, for this week, first week, I guess everybody is still waking up. Uh, coming back to uh, office from their holidays. Uh, today is the last day of the uh, holidays, to be very honest. So 7th Jan, uh, tomorrow onwards, everybody should be back in their on their desks, in their offices, in the schools. Uh, Ontario did announce one change. We spoke about it yesterday. So if you missed that, that was on the international student stream. Please give that video a look. Uh, it's there on the YouTube channel, the, the one before this. Uh, that was about the international student stream. Now, even international students who have completed a one-year program in Canada uh, may be eligible depending on which public institution or public college you have completed your program through and what kind of a program it was. So if you have completed through designated learning institutions that are also listed on the Ontario's website and you completed within the last two years, then you may be eligible. So give that video a look. We, we discussed this in detail yesterday. So that was the change that Ontario made earlier. It was it had to be at least two years or you needed a bachelor's degree as the minimum criteria. Uh, express entry, obviously, there were no draws. <laughs> That's why it just says blank express entry and then nothing. Uh, we were anticipating. Or, I mean, at least I was quite pumped up this week. I thought there would be a draw on the you know 3rd or 4th of January. There has been the, a, a draw on the 4th, I think, in 2017 or 2018. I forget the date. So they have conducted a draw as early as that. This week, nothing, nada. Uh, I, I was really hoping that, you know, on 3rd of Jan, we would see a draw and that would really, really make it very exciting. But we didn't. So that's why all eyes are now on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's see if RCC does something spectacular for next week. And that's where we'll be looking at. Uh, in other news, we have some small snippets of news. For people who still do not know, uh, for international students now, the requirement for funds has increased to 20,635, which has gone up from earlier 10,000 requirements. As far as the new criteria for the assessment 
of the international study visas is concerned, IRCC will now verify every single uh, acceptance letter through the portal that they have launched. And there, all the designated learning institutions will have to go and validate the acceptance letters they have issued. That way, IRCC will know that those acceptance letters are genuine. And therefore, then they will be able to proceed. This is basically to circumvent or this is basically to, uh, you know, to avoid any issues with applications where IRCC earlier would just take it on the face value. If you have an acceptance letter, they would take it. Uh, but now they obviously want to validate and verify it as well. So again, all of this is happening because people choose fraudulent ways of coming to Canada. And the more and more and more people do that, the more and more and more IRCC and, and other departments will find ways in order to avoid those uh, issues. Uh, they've also issued, uh, they've also started a trusted institutions framework. Now, this is going to be launched sometimes later this year. More details are not available on this, but it is understood that they would be identifying certain institutions, which are obviously trusted institutions. They would have to follow certain criteria in terms of the quality of education, in terms of the support that they provide to the students, in terms of the accommodation, in terms of the uh, the acceptance rate of their uh, students. And based on that, if you are able to get admission into these institutions, you may have a higher, better chance of approval for your visas. But again, this has not yet been launched. It's a too tired system, and this will probably come into play uh, sometime later this year. Now, of course, we want to move very quickly. So let's discuss express entry in January 2024. This is the first year. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee this morning. I woke up pretty late and then I realized I had promised to do today. Uh, this is the first month of the year, January 2024. And uh, here, the everything resets, right? Everything resets in the sense like the quotas, the immigration targets, the uh, everything resets. Jan 1, everything resets. There is obviously a, a carryover from the previous year in terms of the processing of applications, right? So what I'm trying to say is that so many people have applied for applications for permanent residence applications in 2023, late in 2023, ITAs were being sent out right until the uh, end of December. So those will carry forward to 2024 in terms of the PR targets, the permanent resident targets. You see, each year, IRCC announces that these are the number of people that they will accept as permanent residents. For this year, for 2024, the target is for uh, 485,000 people, of which the economic immigration, economic basically means express entry, PNPs, uh, business immigration, caregiver programs, all of this economic immigration, economic pathways, the number is roughly about 280,000, 285,000 people. So that will be a number of people who will immigrate to Canada and will become permanent residents in the year 2024. Express entry is a system and the programs in express entry are part of this economic pathway. So this is the number. So people who received their ITAs towards the end of the year, people who received who did not yet get their COPRs, they will all account towards the permanent resident targets for the year 2024. Similarly, as we move into this year, anytime you receive, start receiving your ITAs after June, July, August, September, those months, all of those will then translate into the PR targets for the following year, which will be 2025. So this is how basically it works. But what resets every year is obviously the PR targets because now they will start counting who all became PR from 1st of Jan. But also what resets at this point of time is the quotas that they have of how many invitations they will issue. So let me take a look and see. Yes. So I have this data over here. In the 2024, in this year, do I have that chart here? Let me just see. I do have this. Yes. So this is the immigration levels plan. For this year, the target is 485,000, of which federal high skilled, if you see column three, uh, sorry, the row three, uh, federal high skill, it says 110,770. The low range is 90,000, high range is 116,000. So 110,770, that is the number of people IRCC will accept through express entry. People, not ITAs, always, always people mix this number as ITAs. This is not the number of ITAs that IRCC will issue. Please, guys, this is the number of people. One ITA, one successful ITA can mean multiple people. It could mean uh, spouses, partners, their children. So one idea could have four people, right? Uh, 
two spouses, two children, four people. So those four people are accounted towards this number. It's not the number of ITAs. I keep have, I have to keep repeating this all the time. So 110,000 people is the quota for this year. There is also, I mean, my, my slide is a bit cut short on this one, but there are also 110,000 people who will be coming to Canada under the provincial nominee programs. Now, some of those provincial nominee programs are linked to express entry. Therefore, those people will get added to this number. And therefore, you will see the total number of people who will come to Canada under Express Entry. When I'm saying Express Entry, it's not a program. means the programs that are managed by Express Entry would be roughly 160, 150,000 to 160,000 people for this year, including the people who come through CCs, Federal Skilled Worker, Federal Skilled Trade categories, as well as through the PNP programs. Now, these are the people who will get invited. So if there are 160,000 people who have to get invited in the year 2024, then if you calculate by the way of there is an average number of people who decline their ITAs. Now, that number is not available. Uh, we always re take reference from the 2017 to 2020, the, 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 the data that has been made available by RCC on the open source data on their website. And we realize that total number of invitations that are declined, rejected, refused, three, three categories. So the first two, the decline and the rejected is high, refused numbers are low. So that is roughly 32%, 32 to 34% of the total number of ATAs that are issued, those get refused or rejected. And obviously people decline as well. A lot of people decline. Not a good idea to decline, but a lot of people decline anyways, right? So those 32 34% go back into the you know in to the pool of of IRCCs wanting to be uh, in sending out new invitations so therefore taking those 32 32 32 to 34% into account and keeping in mind that one successful ITA could mean multiple people because it could mean multiple people and you take an average each year how many people how many ITAs are issued how many people actually immigrate to Canada depending on the number of this thing and you come to a average of 2.23 that is uh, the number of people per one uh, successful positive ITA so if you put all of this into one bag and mix these numbers up and come I mean you can you obviously there are some some data nerds out there who like to crunch numbers so please by all means go ahead and do it maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong but the number of ITAs that will be issued based on these mathematics these numbers is between 90,000 to 95,000 for this year. Uh, I know IRCC has already issued more than 110,000 for the year of 2023. Obviously, they have their own, uh, uh, I mean, understanding of better understanding of the plans and the numbers. But based on these numbers, based on what information we have, based on the numbers that we have, the total number of ITAs that are expected for the year. 2024 is between 90 to 95,000 considering the, the overall quotas and targets and decline ratios in the number of people average. Okay. Now, with that being said, if that is the number, then uh, for the year 2023, they admitted uh, 110,000, or oh, sorry, they invited 110,266 ITAs. I'm expecting about 90 to 95,000 for 2024. What will be the ratio? between the regular draws and the category based draws now that's where it becomes interesting because uh, for everybody who is following uh, you know uh, express entry and who likes express entry you would uh, see that uh, that is where everything changes right that is where uh, it all becomes interesting as to what category and would it be general? Would it be PNP? Would it be uh, how many categories? Will they make changes to these categories? Will the new knock codes be announced? All this at this point of time is out there. Don't know much about it. In February, it is expected that IRCC will table a report in which they will present to us how did they choose these categories? How did they choose these knock codes? On what basis were these knock codes changed and, and identified? And prospectively give us some inclination of what is to expect. In my opinion, at this point of time, I don't expect any changes in the categories. I think these categories will continue because there is uh, several labor market reports through the provincial levels and through the federal levels have indicated a huge uh, strain on the housing and obviously the government is really really making a push in, in trying to build more homes so the trade categories will stay uh healthcare is obviously also in huge 
uh, crunch at this point of time and therefore those demands continue and I expect healthcare will also continue. The agriculture, the number of knock codes are very, very few. There are only three knock codes there. Again, there may be some addition to that. I don't see that's changing either. Transport categories, uh, I do not expect the, 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 the truck drivers to be removed. I think they will cover in Canada. So by and large, even in transport category, there might be a few knock codes that might be removed, that might be added. Uh, but other than that, they will also remain. Now that brings us back to the STEM category. Now in STEM category, there are a total of 24 knock codes. Obviously, there are a lot of IT knock codes. In addition to IT knock codes, there are some engineering knock codes and some uh, architects, etc. as well. So in total, I also expect STEM categories to continue. Now, depending on the market demand, there might be a there might come a situation where they might want to invite some categories more than the others. Uh, that again, those numbers will be projected to us only at a later date towards this year, because at this point of time, they probably are going to just play it by the year. Therefore, uh, the way I see it, I expect the general draws will continue. I expect they will allot a portion to the total categories and a portion to the general draws. Because mind you, even in the general draws, even in the provincial nominee draws, a lot of these people who are in the categories are included. And when IRCC identifies the categories, they are, and I, they are identifying the total number of people, regardless of whether they come through categories or general draws. That is the case with STEM. A lot of people in STEM categories assumed that because IRCC made public that they were looking to bring in 32% under STEM categories, they thought only the category-based draws would have 32% for, for STEM. No, that is not how it was the total number of invitations would have 32% for STEM, which is actually quite true. If you see a lot of these, and the data will start coming through in, in, in some time, the most number of invitations went to the IT knock codes, and they actually do cover more than 32% of the total invitation sent, not under this, only under the category based draws. So if you go with that understanding, if you go with that knowledge, then you will realize that this is how the whole differentiation is made. And by that, I find I mean, I feel that they will, obviously they have to make invitations for the PNPs, right? So we already know about 40 to 50,000 ITAs are, are for, for PNPs. So 40 to 50,000 people are there for uh, PNPs and those will get invited anyways. Because those will get invited. So those are all part of the general draw. That is what IRCC has started calling these all program or no program specified draws. They start calling it the general draw. If PNPs are included in the general draw, then in addition to the PNPs, you will have those people who probably do not fall under the category draws, but who have a high CRS score, they will also get cleared out in the general draw, leaving the other other people trying to figure out whether they should go through a PNP or they should find some more uh, work experience within the category and probably try to increase the CRS. So in all this mumbo jumbo that I'm trying to say, I am I am assuming, I'm, I'm expecting, in my opinion, I'm, I'm just uh, speculating, that about 50 to 60% would go towards the general draws and 40% will go through the categories. And the reason why I have clearly said 50 to 60 more towards the general draw because they also include the PNP draws. Okay, so PNP draws included in the general draw, I would expect 40 to 60%, or 40 to, uh, 50 to 60% and 40% for the category based draws. Uh, the numbers are what uh, what what will suggest exactly how it goes and if i go with that uh, understanding a lot of people are quite scared that because the crs scores went up to 560s and 540s that they will stay that even people at score of 500 are quite scared they're quite worried oh, oh i will not get an idea because my score is 500 oh my score is at 490s i will not get an idea what should i do should i get an lmia should i study more should i guys again understand when the draws went up to 560s and 540s, that was towards the end of last year, there was a, a, a reason behind it. One first reason was that there was a hiatus of two months. The draws did not happen for two months. Okay, There was a technical glitch. They did not conduct the draws for two months. When they did conduct a draw for, after two months, they made one single big draw. Score was five. I mean, we expected, right? We know. And that draw also basically covered only the nominations or PNPs as they came towards the end of the year. I mean, as it is, I'm telling you that this in 2023, they issued 110,000 ITAs. In my opinion, that number was very, very high. It, it did not it did not match with what the target for this year. I think with all these glitches and trying to overcome that glitches 
and with the whole category because that was for the first time they were doing the category based draws somewhere some triggers were pulled and extra invitations were issued out in certain of those certain categories of those I mean, certain segment of those uh, programs and therefore because you see in march in march of 2023 they issued 21000 invitations in a span of just 14 days in a span of two weeks back to back back to back 7000 7000 7000 so that was their effort to reduce the CRS score because the scores had gone way too high uh, after the big gap, you know, uh, after the knock changes happened. So therefore, this year, so far, by God's grace, everything is looking fine. That there are, there are no tech glitches anticipated at this point of time. Nothing big is expected from IRCC in terms of making any changes. So the draws should continue in a regular manner. Now, when the draws will continue in the regular manner, all those people who are freaked out with these high scores need to understand that one last year the quotas were pretty much exhausted. The number of targets were already reached. They did not have too many invitations to issue. They had to clear the PNPs and there was a big gap in the draws. And therefore, the scores were right up at 560s and then after that 540s. Again, both those draws were primarily there to, con they were conducted only to clear out the nominations. They were not primarily there for the express entry pool. So if you understand that, then you will realize that now that they are back to, and now that they will start conducting the general draws again, and they have a complete reset, complete new bank of uh, quotas of ITS to issue, they will probably go back to issuing regular general draws, regular size draws, and this will very quickly bring the scores down back to the levels of 500, 490s, and... Uh, at some point of time, the expectation is also that it might go into 480s when I don't know, okay? Because it all depends on how many people are getting, how many people are entering into the pool and <clears throat> how many invitations are being issued and with what frequency, because all those are unknown to speculate when and how the scores will drop, I, I don't know. But for January, because today's session is all about January and only January, I anticipate that there should be at least two weeks of draws so by saying two weeks of draws, so I'm expecting the draws in the next week, uh, the week of 8th of January, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 January, this particular week, I expect draws, multiple draws probably. Uh, they might start with a general category and they might do a, a category-based draw. And then again, from there on, I expect another draw in the, in the fourth week, which is your 22nd January week, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, that week of January, I expect another round of draws. In both these, now last year, IRCC issued 11,000 invitations in January. They did two draws, 5,500, 5,500, two draws. But that was again to cover up for the fact that they were not conducting draws in 2022 late. Uh, you can, I mean, at least I would expect them to come back with at least 4,000-ish to 4,500 to 5,000 kind of draws, uh, two draws in, in January for general. And again, at this point of time, very difficult to sort of speculate to see uh, which categories they will start with because and I have that number here if you see this screen in the second row it says overall French speaking permanent uh, permanent resident admission outside Quebec is 26,100 now this 26,100 is not an additional number it is part of all the immigration programs but because they have identified they would be inviting 26,000 or rather they will have 26,000 people who will become permanent residents through the francophone streams, uh, I absolutely anticipate that they would be there would be a greater push towards the francophone uh, category based draw. So you will see a lot of invitations going out to francophone uh, speakers through, through francophones. You will see a lot of invitations and big numbers as well as frequent draws happening for the French speakers. So if you're still on the fence about thinking, should I uh, study French, should I not study French, you still have time, you can still make it happen because this French speaker stream will continue. This category will not stop. This will happen in 2024, this will happen in 25, this will happen in 26. The numbers are only increasing. For this year, it is 6%, next year it's 7%, in 26 it's 8%. That number will continue because French is the second official language of Canada and there is a huge push of encouraging francophones outside Quebec. So French is absolutely your golden ticket if you can put in your hard work and effort and ace it and get there. CLB7 is all you need. So this is what the numbers are suggesting. In my uh, 
in my understanding and in my assumptions, I expect two draws or two draw weeks for this month, month of January. Uh, I expect between four and a half thousand to five thousand kind of invitations. So I expect about between nine thousand to ten thousand invitations being issued in January. I expect the scores to drop. I expect the scores to rush to touch. 500 within January itself and I'm saying 500 I do not I mean obviously it is already in 500s I'm talking about between 500 to 510 I expect the scores to drop to 500 to 510 within this month itself and going into February probably lower as well a lot of it depends on how frequently IRCC conducts the draw and how many invitations they conduct so again all of this being though it is speculation it is still based on the fact that they now have a new quota of uh, the uh, ITAs to issue. Now, if you look at this, the, the, the pool distribution, this is as of December 17th, 2023. 501 to 600 was 4,433. Uh, 601 to 1,200 was 1,011. Now, 1,011 obviously was cleared out because they did conduct a general draw where the score was 540, 541, 542 uh, in, in the last, I mean, end of December. And 1,350 invitations were issued then. So that 1,011 was cleared out. 501 to 600, that remains. That number is there. It probably would be a, a similar number. Uh, 601 to 1,200 would have increased. Or you would have seen about another 1,000 people who would, who would have received the nominations over the last two weeks. I don't expect too many people would have gotten it. Because there were holidays. A lot of people were you know, taking it chill. So probably between 600 to 1,000 people is what you will see under the nominees. Uh, 601 to 1200 as and when the new draws happen uh, next week. So therefore, if a draw is to happen next week and a general draw within, within, with a draw size of four, four and a half thousand, you will see the scores will come very quickly into five tens, uh, five twenties. I don't think five twenties, but I would say about five tens, five twenties probably. That, that would be the first draw score for general. Second general draws will come right down to 500s, low 500s to between 500 to 510. That is what my uh, anticipation is for this particular draw. Uh, between 491 to 500, there is only 5140. It's not a very big number given what we have seen earlier. And 481 to 490 is even smaller. When I'm saying smaller, I'm talking in comparison to what we have seen. When it was same time last year, that number was horrendous. It was about 20, 20, 20 22,000. With 8,000 people at 481 to 490, with 491 to 500, only 5,140. Therefore, if they do continue with the draw size of 4,000, 5,000 every two weeks, you would see the numbers going into 490s probably by Feb. And there is a high possibility of numbers even breaching the 490 and getting into the 480s probably by Feb again late or March as well. Again, all this speculation predictions are only based on uh, understanding how many people are there in the pool, understanding of what IRCC can uh, invite because they've done it before. They've done it in March 2023. They invited 21,000 people in a span of 14 days and definitely looking forward to something like that happening because if that happens, even 470s is a distinct possibility. Though a bit bleak, to be, I'll be very honest. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be very uh, optimistic in this uh, regard at this point of time because I have to, I have to see it to believe it right from IRCC uh, but possibilities yes but what that also does you see whenever these kind of draws happen whenever the scores are on the lower side what that does is it prompts provinces like Ontario to give you for example like there is a there was a stem category draw which happened at 481 I mean a lot of people rejoiced at 5900 invitations were issued because it happened after a long time <clears throat> so what was the cascading effect Ontario conducted a human capital priorities draw under the tech draw the next week and they picked up the low score, a high score at 480 and then went down to 472. Now, had Ontario conducted a draw before IRCC conducted, then their scores would have been very, very high. So therefore, whenever IRCC would, would conduct a draw, which, which is slightly lower or a lower into 480s, 490s and fingers crossed somewhere... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, let's not, let, let's stick with 480s for the time. <laughs> let's let's not go. Let's not overstep ourselves yet. Let's say if they come come into the 480s, therefore the cascading effect of that will be that Ontario will also conduct the lower segment draws. So even if if IRCC was to conduct a STEM category draw with a lower score in 470s, which is now a very very uh, serious possibility, then 
Ontario's conducting draw would then go into 460s, probably even 450s. So that is how it helps even people on the lower range of scores to sort of, you know, get invited uh, with from Ontario or, or any corresponding uh, province if they choose to conduct a draw. But these are all distinct possibilities. Healthcare will continue. STEM should, should continue in most uh, in, in the same form. Probably some not changes there. Uh, transport, agriculture, French definitely should continue. Trade absolutely will, will continue. Probably some changes here and there in terms of what uh, can and cannot be included. That's all that I have for you for this particular presentation for this weekly roundup and, and this session of uh, Express Entries. Uh, <clears throat> connect with us on all social media platforms. Obviously, hit a like on this video, subscribe, share, and do everything that all social media influencers tend to do. Though I don't think I'm an influencer, but uh, more of you coming on board. Because if if Canada is on your mind, if, if you're thinking express entry, if you're thinking Canadian immigration, if you're thinking study in Canada, work in Canada, immigrate to Canada, visit Canada, hey, this is the channel. This is the place that you got to be, right? So have to give us a follow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have to give us a follow. Have to give us a share. Have to give us a subscribe. That's all that we are looking for. Uh, okay. Akash says, after launching category-based draws, they invited around 48,000 in six months only. Now, guess scores for general and quotas for general. Well, as I said, it was something new that they did. Uh, you should also look at the numbers that they uh, invited before they started the category-based draws, right? Uh, those numbers are also pretty big after you take into account 110,000 invitations issued in the, in the whole year. When actually they, in, in, my, in my understanding, they actually went over their quota for the year. So the, definitely that number was exceeded for sure. Uh, but again, then there are also a lot of people who have been declining their ideas for the good reasons, for the bad reasons. I don't know, but, but they have been declining ideas. So when you decline an idea, it's always a problem, not only for the whole pool, <laughs> but also for people who missed out on the ideas. Super chats, fun facts with Rita. Sorry, nothing there. Uh, Sajad says, can I leave Canada after getting ECOPR and go to US to visit my family, then get my PR card to US through my friend? Is it risky? <clears throat> so in principle, once you have your ECOPR, you can absolutely travel. You can go anywhere in the world, not only US. Uh, and if you are in the US, you don't even need your PR card. You can just drive across the border using your COPR, which is the proof that you are a permanent resident of Canada. And that is not a problem. And if your friend is carrying your PR card for you, it's, I mean, as for the law is concerned, just the way, right? I mean, if you're crossing a border and you have somebody else's passport with you when you shouldn't be having it, then that can always, if you're frisked, if you're checked, then that's an issue. The same thing is with PR card. If somebody else is carrying a PR card when they shouldn't be having it on their person, then that's always a, a, a question. That is the reason you have the option for PRTD. But uh, risky if they are checked. Otherwise, people are doing it all the time. People are sending it by post. People are sending it by courier. Other people are carrying it for them. It, it happens all the time. But uh, if you're asking as per the law, uh, just like passport, you cannot carry somebody else's passport across the border. Similarly, the same thing with PR card. You shouldn't be carrying somebody else's PR card across the border if that person is obviously not with you. Uh, other than that, if you are in the US, if you have your ECOPR, just drive across the border uh, with your COPR in a private car. There's no problem. Uh, if you do not have your PR card, if you are having trouble to come to Canada, to any other country, if you're traveled on ECOPR, ECOPR, then you can also apply for PRTD, Permanent Resident Travel Document, and uh, you would be then able to use that to travel back to Canada. Rishabh says, I got biometric instruction letter. I am a ship officer sailing, won't be able to get it done on time during due to ship in mid-Pacific. Can I request for extension? Do they consider? Yes, that is not a problem. In situations such as yourself, you can raise a web form. You can request for additional time to complete your uh, biometrics. Uh, again, yours is an extraordinary circumstance. They should consider it. I don't see that as a problem. All right. 
Is passport family page showing parent's name and current utility bill adequate to claim sibling points in EE or birth certificate is mandatory? So good question. A lot of people get confused with this. What do you need to claim sibling points, right? So when you're claiming your sibling points, 15 CRS points in, in express entry, you are required to prove three things. First is proof of relationship. So either you provide your birth certificate, your sibling's birth certificate to establish common parent's name. IRCC also accepts passport copies uh, because I used it for my brother and I know that it worked for him as well. Uh, I don't have my birth certificate. So I know we, we use the, the passport copies and it worked because passport copies also indicate common parent's name and therefore that also works for your proof of relationship. Second uh, proof that you need to provide is the proof of status. So if your sibling in Canada is a permanent resident or a citizen, then you need to provide a copy of their document that establishes their proof. Uh, for a permanent resident, provide both sides of the PR card and as a citizen, provide a copy of their passport or citizenship certificate. Third is their proof of residency. They have to be residing in Canada in order for you to claim sibling points. So for proof of residency, you can provide their employment documents, pay stubs, uh, lease agreement and utility bills. Just one document for proof of residency may not work. You should provide at least two or multiple documents to establish their proof of residency. And that will get you your 15 CRS points. <laughs> uh, to be considered for French categories draws, does French need to be your first official language or can it be second as well? It can be second. I have seen cases where people had the, language, the French as a second language, but you need to have CLB 7 as your score. That is the main requirement. Any chance for Ontario to touch 471 within the next three months? Well, I don't know if it will happen within the next three months or not, but I definitely expect Ontario to touch 471 uh, because it would correspond with the, uh, the the draw that might IRCC might conduct for STEM category. Now, when IRCC will conduct it for STEM category, I don't know. Uh, but whenever they do and whatever the score is, uh, Ontario will choose one point less than that score. And then the low range could be any number that they decide depending on how many invitations they wish to invite. But yes, I, I would anticipate it. I just do not know when that might happen. Under French category stream, miss the IT in the last draw due to tie-breaking rule. What are the chances? Well, I would expect the chances to be good. As I said, and I explained earlier, uh, that they do intend to have about 26,000 people who would be coming to Canada uh, under the French speaker stream. And therefore, they would be inviting more and more people this year. And therefore, the draws would be more uh, frequent and the number of invitations could also be high. And therefore, uh, I would definitely expect 470 to get drawn out. My program was one year from Humber College, but it, it it was awarded Certificate of Achievement, not Ontario Graduate Certificate. Is this eligible for OINP International Student Stream? Unfortunately not. Uh, if you are just awarded a Certificate of Achievement, that honestly is not an education credential. Maybe you need to talk to Humber again and see what your credential was. It should have been a post-secondary diploma or a post-secondary uh, certificate. A graduate certificate because it's in Ontario. So just a certificate of achievement doesn't sound like a educational credential. So just, just have a word with the uh, college to see if that credential could be rephrased or you could be given a, a credential based on what you actually studied and completed. But to answer your question, certificate of achievement is not eligible for the Ontario's international student stream employer's job offer. Amod is asking, is 496 good score for CEC all program work permit expiring in March 24? Well, as I just explained in detail that I would certainly, certainly expect 490s to get cleared out pretty soon. Uh, I don't know when, of course, uh, but uh, if and when the draws do continue and, and if IRCC does uh, invite people in the segments of 4,000, 5,000 invitations, then uh, I expect definitely 500s to get cleared out in January. And therefore, uh, February does seem to be positive outlook or it does seem to have a positive outlook for 490s. What is the average time taken by IRCC to take next steps to submitted PR application under EE? Nearing two months since submitted talks. I don't understand that question. But if you're asking me about the R10 checks, so which basically means after you have submitted your PR application, 
uh, what is the next step in terms of getting your biometrics request, getting your medicals passed and your UCI updated. At this point of time, it is averaging between two to three months. We also started seeing that that, that time period became longer towards the end of last year. Uh, primarily because they wanted to slow down on the processing as well, because they had already reached their PR targets for the year 2023. Uh, I would expect that they will start picking up pace uh, once they come into this year. And therefore, you would start seeing that number reducing. But at this point of time, it's between two to two and a half months after having submitted your application. Rishabh says, appreciate your content sharing of knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate that, Rishabh. Rowan says, I have CRS score of 492. Is it possible for me to get an ITA in skilled occupation draw for six months of experience 72104? Uh, it's a good score. 492 is a great, great score. And I absolutely would have a very strong, positive belief that you should get invited. I mean, you also have experience in 72104. I mean, what else would you need, right? You are eligible in the construction category draw. Your score is 492. I'm sure there will be tons and tons of people out there who would want to kill to be in your place. So, yeah, uh, wish you all the best. I'm, I'm absolutely sure you should get invited pretty soon. Because nothing there. I'm sorry. Applying for study permit, my, I don't know what WE means, is freelance work experience. Is freelance music have ITR, bank statement, references, CRS will be 525, with one year Canadian work experience, is it possible to prove work experience successfully? Uh, oof. Freelance work experience is always troublesome to prove. You have to prove that first of all, you're a freelancer, right? That you were self-employed. Uh, the biggest problem in, in this kind of work experience is to prove your hours at work. How many hours did you work and your period of work? That is the biggest problem when you're trying to establish a work experience because IRCC needs to prove your requires you to prove your knock code uh, so you will do that by getting uh, employment reference letters or, or duty letters from your clients then then they need you to prove that this was paid so you would you would show that you were paid for all this period of work through bank transfers invoices income tax returns as you said and more importantly the period of work from which date to which date were you working how many hours per week once you figure out how you're going to establish that, then you should be fine with this. Is vaping going to affect my medical? Vaping will not affect your medical, but it may. Again, I'm not a health practitioner. It may certainly affect your health. Uh, you may need to recommend or you may need to check with a medical practitioner about it. But as far as IRCC's medicals are concerned, just vaping by itself will not impact that. I'm a full-time student in India earning 3,000. If my mother was depositing 1 to 2 lakh as FD in my bank account for my PR, do I need to provide gift deed since the funds will be in will be in more than six months? Uh, so IRCC expects you to show your, your fund statement or provide your average balance for each of the last six months. This is basically done to establish that if you've already had the funds, or if you have deposited the funds within the last six months. If you have had the funds for six months or more, then you do not need to provide any proof as to where did the funds come from. If the funds have been deposited in your account within the last six months, then you will need to provide proof or source of where the funds came from because IRCC would like to establish that this money was not uh, taken as loan. Shruti, I'm sorry, there's no question there. Which province have a good chance for sibling in PNP stream? Well, two provinces give advantage based on uh, family. Uh, the first one is Saskatchewan. They give up to 20 points extra. Uh, if you have a close family member who is living in Saskatchewan, so you, and if you have a family outside Canada who wants to come to immigrate to Canada, and if they're choosing Saskatchewan as the program and province, then they can get up to 20 points in their uh, scoring grid. The other province which gives you a big advantage in terms of uh, relative uh, in the province is Manitoba. Specifically, if you are outside the Winnipeg area, if you're in the rural uh, Manitoba area, then you get even more points and that really, really helps. So definitely uh, these two provinces, if you're looking to get advantage for uh, sibling uh, relationship in terms of being in Canada. 
do you have to apply the moment you are eligible or you can apply early? I'm eligible January 9th. I have 498 points. So I'm not sure what you mean by apply. If you're talking about creating your express entry profile, you absolutely can create at any point of time because your work experience uh, is calculated as per the month year. So whether you do it on the 1st of January or the 9th of January, it's going to be the same thing. Of course, if you do get invited, the submission of your application should happen only after you have completed the actual period of uh, valid work experience for which you are claiming points. I have one year of continuous work experience in STEM and in India and three years of experience in different knock code. Okay, good luck. I, I don't know what the question there is. I wish you all the best. Uh, I worked in tier four customer service. I don't know what WAH is or WAH is. Uh, one year and then I became business analyst. I have, uh, I, I honestly don't understand what you are trying to say here. But if it is a tier four knock code, you do not have to include it in your work history because it is not eligible. What you can do is once you get an invitation, once you get an ITA and you're preparing your application, then at that point of time, you can include, you must include your customer service tier four work experience in your personal history because you have to disclose all your employment and activities there. Uh, Alpheus says, uh, awesome content. Thank you so much. Uh, what if express entry profile expires before Ontario nomination? Express entry profile is expiring in March 24, but IELTS are valid till February 25. Well, good question. Uh, this particular issue about the profile expiring is a big problem only with one province, and that is Alberta. If your profile expires with an Alberta nomination application in process or uh, even after you have received the nomination and you haven't done anything about it, then Alberta completely, uh, I mean, they don't do anything about it. They will not give you the nomination again. But as far as Ontario is concerned, if your express entry profile expires during the Ontario's nomination application process or even after that, you just need to inform Ontario. You will have to email them. Please make sure you email them the letter that you get from IRCC, which says that your profile has expired. And you also send them the new letter that you get when you create a new express entry profile. It says, welcome to the job bank, that letter. And make sure you include your job bank verification code in the email that you sent to Ontario, asking them to link the nomination to your new express entry profile. Ontario will absolutely oblige and, and there is no problem with that. Divya says, I currently have four years Indian experience for industrial and manufacturing engineering knock arrived in Canada on study permit. Can I be eligible for STEM? Uh, also, is P engineering necessary? My course is one year. Uh, in express entry, the requirements that are mentioned under the employer requirements under the NOC are not considered when they are assessing your application. So don't worry about the P engineering uh, qualification. If you have experience in India and therefore there is no requirement for P engineering uh, certification, then you can absolutely claim that work experience. The requirement for the category based withdrawal is that your work experience should be for six months, at least six months, continuous and within the last three years. So if that segment of six months is within the last three years continuous, then you can absolutely become eligible in the category based role and, and get invited if, if you have the score that is high enough. I'm on closed work permit in Ontario. My original initiated work permit, there's too much of acronyms there. And I, as much as I can read most of them, I don't understand a lot of it. So I applied Alberta pathway after moving to Alberta or apply from Ontario itself before I moved to Alberta. Well, if you're asking me that you wish to apply for Alberta's uh, PNP program, uh, but your work permit location is outside Alberta, then you can apply because you may have a job offer from Alberta. So as far as the requirement is concerned is that you should have an Alberta job offer. But nowadays, I've also seen that Alberta is asking for proof of you having moved to Alberta. So either you should be in the process of moving, you should have moved, or you should be able to explain to Alberta why you haven't moved yet and how soon you will be moving. Based on that, Alberta may choose to decide on your application accordingly. I'm on implied status, waiting for LMIA and work permit extension. Can temporary foreign workers have two LMIAs for work permit and another one for PR with the same employer? Why would you have two work, uh, two LMIAs? 
uh, global talent stream and high wage. Well, global talent stream by itself is a high wage LMIA. Uh, so if you have a global talent stream LMIA, you can use it for your 50 points in your PR application and you can also apply for a closed work permit. You don't need two LMIAs. Uh, but if the question is, can you have two LMIAs? Yes, you can have two LMIAs. That's not a problem. Uh, my score is 392. I'm a cybersecurity specialist. Any province in mind one should target working to improve, uh, have five years of UX experience. Well, the only province you should target should be either British Columbia. Uh, and in both the cases, you should find an employer, either British Columbia or Alberta. And in both the cases, you should find an employer who wishes to hire you. And then that would then help you apply through the respective PNT programs and then PR. Uh, otherwise, the score is a bit too quite low. Right. Last question before I will scoot off. Of course, I will not be able to answer everybody's questions. So for that, I do request you to please post your questions in the comments after the video so that I'll come back and respond to as many questions as I can. Dara says, I have done one year of studies in Toronto and I'm also learning French. What are my chances for express entry for Ontario in OIMP in Ontario? I, I, I can't tell you that is very little information to give you anything of that sort. Uh, please check the Ontario's PNP programs. If you are learning French, then the French speaker becomes a great opportunity, whether through this uh, category based draws or even Ontario's uh, uh, French speaker stream. And uh, yeah, then your express entry matters, then your CRS score matters. And, and that's how you would go about it. But yeah, this is just too little. I mean, there is absolutely no information there for me to give you anything else other than that. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining in. Uh, it was great doing this as, as normal. Please do tune in again for another live session when we do it next Saturday. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and I shall see you again.